Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. How to Pray and Grow Rich. There was the title in bold print, advertising something that compelled you to read the fine print in the ad. The pitch began, This offer may be the most important event of your entire lifetime. That sounded exciting, so I read on. In this book, you will discover how to pray and grow rich, and I promise you immediate results, said Dr. Joseph Murphy. The table of contents read like, Your right to be rich, the three steps to riches, how to pray and grow rich, where to discover a gold mine, the multimillion dollar formula. Now, it isn't that I'm an unbelieving sort of skeptic, but with the price of the book what it was, I began asking myself, who really gets rich? The author or the person who reads the book, How to Pray and Grow Rich? I know a lot of churches that specialize in prayer, but for some reason I am left with the impression that they are not exactly rich. In fact, to hear the passionate comments at offering time, I am doubting that they have ever heard of Mr. Murphy's book. I know another fellow who should have read the book. His name was Peter. He was a fisherman. In Acts chapter 3, Luke tells us that he was on his way to the temple to pray. Side comment by Dr. Luke. When a lame beggar stopped him, Peter had to tell him, Look, silver and gold have I none. But I like what Peter did tell him, which indicated something of the real, not the prostituted nature of prayer. Peter said, What I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And Luke tells us the layman did just that. In the years that I've spent studying for a master's and a doctorate in Bible, I can't remember a single reference from Scripture that says anything about praying and growing rich. I do remember Jesus commented on the effectiveness of poverty programs. He candidly said, The poor you will always have with you. But Jesus did talk a lot about prayer and its effectiveness. There is a school of thought, still current today, that suggests prayer is a kind of inside pull with God. You know, string pulling, a kind of technique that gets you whatever you want. Now that whole idea misrepresents the nature of prayer and it distorts what the Bible says about prayer. Prayer is not a plea of gimme's this and gimme that any more than your relationship with your earthly father is constantly, give me some money, Dad. Prayer is communication with the Father. The disciples came to Jesus, and he sat down with them beside blue Galilee, and he taught them. He said, After this manner, therefore, you should pray. He began by saying, Our Father who is in heaven, let your name be holy. Prayer speaks of a relationship with God made possible because of His Son, Jesus. Christ said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He also said, Our requests should be directed to God the Father in His name. He said, You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Paul said, Our requests should be made to God with thanksgiving. And that's not a bad idea. Question. For what are you thankful? The next time you feel led to ask God to make you rich, sit down first and count your blessings. Begin by thanking God for what He's already done and thank Him for the prayers that have already been answered, and then you will realize you are rich. They are the riches of health and happiness, children, character, and influence, the things that really count. Well did Jesus say a man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Here's something to think about as we come to the end of today's commentary. Who really holds the reins to your heart? Do you? Or does God? Or does the enemy of our souls? I do know one thing. When you have yielded to God and you have claimed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, He is Lord. He changes your heart by giving you a new one. I'm Harold Sala. You've just heard Guidelines.